Hi guys, today I want to go through some example problems with equilibrium of forces. So starting off, a non-uniform car. A non-uniform car of weight 15,000 newtons is found to exert a force of 9,000 newtons on the front wheels and 6,000 newtons on the rear wheels. The distance between the rear and front wheels is 1.8 meters. Find the center of gravity of the car. Okay, so let's start off by looking at our diagram here. So if we're exerting a force of uh, 6,000 newtons going downwards onto the floor, then the floor must exert an equal and opposite force, an up thrust of 6,000 newtons as well. Uh, otherwise, there would be some kind of acceleration somewhere. Likewise, at the front, well, we've got our 9,000 going up, and that's going to balance with our 15,000 going down. Now, if we take a distance, or we're going to take the, the moments about the rear tyre, Okay, so this center of mass where the 15,000 newtons is, is some distance x from the rear wheels. So we know 15,000 times by x is equal to 9,000 times by 1.8. So the uh, clockwise moment produced by the uh, center of mass is going to balance with the anti-clockwise moment produced by the 9,000 newtons. There's no, there's no reason why we couldn't take the moments about the front wheel or even about the center of mass if we wanted to just if we use one of them uh, like one of the forces we can get rid of that uh, moment produced about by that point so we're just going to take the moments about the rear wheel okay then x is 9000 times by 1.8 divided by 15,000 and we get 1.08 meters from the rear wheels or 1.8 minus 1.08 is uh, 0 0.72 meters from the front wheels. Okay, weight on a rope. A 50 newton weight is attached by a rope to a wall and ceiling. Find the tension in both ropes. So to solve this problem, we're going to resolve our components in the y and uh, uh, x uh, direction. So we've got a force, t uh, a force or a tension T1 on our rope that's going against the wall. And we're going to have another force called T2, so an, a second tension in the second rope that's going up to the ceiling. And that's at an angle of 40 degrees to the ceiling. And it's at right angles at the top there, so it must be 50 degrees to the line of action of the force from the weight, which is 50 newtons. So 50, yeah, well it is 50 newtons, it's also 50 degrees, that angle. So first thing we need to do is uh, split our uh, T2 into uh, its x and y components. So uh, T2 on the x-axis is T2 sine 50, and on the y-axis is T2 cos 50. Now we know T2 cos 50 is equal to 50 newtons. Uh, T2 sine 50 is equal to T1. Now if we rearrange the first equation, we've only got one unknown and that's T2. So 50 divided by cos 50 is 78 newtons. And uh, then we just substitute that into our second equation. So 78 times sine of 50 equals T1, which is 59 newtons. The swinging child. A child of weight 450 newtons is held at a horizontal, so at an angle of 35 degrees to the vertical uh, on a 3 meter swing by a horizontal force. Find the value of the force. Okay, so we've got a 450 newtons going down. And we've got a force uh, going horizontally, which we don't know the value of. And we've also got a tension in the rope going up the rope. Now what we're going to do is we're going to resolve the uh, force of tension into its components on the y and x axis. So we know the force of tension times cos 35 is equal to 450. And we know the uh, force of, from the tension in the rope uh, times sine of 35 is equal to the horizontal force. Uh, now, tan theta is sine theta divided by cos theta. Uh, so if we just do uh, our, first e uh, our second equation over the first equation, we end up with tan 35 equals the horizontal force over 450. And rearranging this, the horizontal force is 450 times tan 35, which is 350 newtons. Uh, the rope on the rod. A 4 meter uniform beam of weight 500 newtons is hinged at one end uh, and uh, at an angle of 60 degrees to the wall and held by a rope at the other end. What is the tension in the rope? 
Okay, so it's a uniform beam, so the center of mass of the rod is going to be halfway down our beam. So if it's 4 meters, then the uh, actual weight is going to act at 2 meters. Uh, we've got our angle, which is 60 degrees, and we've got our force of tension in the rope, and there's our pivot point. So what we're going to work out is, well, if we've got a pivot point, the 400 newtons is going to try and produce a moment, or it is producing a moment that's going... Uh, clockwise and then the tension force is producing a moment that's going anti-clockwise these two moments must be equal okay so 400 times 2 meters times sine of 60 now why is it 2 meters because uh, the the center of mass is only 2 meters down the uh, down the the beam uh, times by uh, sine of 60 that mean that means if we've got tw 2 meters times by the sine of 60 well that's that uh, perpendicular distance to the pivot point from the line of action of the force and that gives us uh, a turning effect or a moment of 600 sorry and yeah 693 newton meters now that must be equal to the moment produced by the tension going in the other direction so that's going to be equal to the force of tension in the rope times by 4 meters this time times by cos of 60 just rearrange and then we find that the the tension in the rope is 346 newtons grass roller up a step what is the minimum force on a handle required to get the 500 newton grass roller with a 60 centimeter radius up the 10 meter up the 10 centimeter step so it's 500 newtons going down and then we've got a force from the handle. Okay, so the, the distance from the handle to, well, if you imagine the actual step as being like a pivot point, well, the, uh, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot is 50 centimeters, which is 0 0.5 meters. And if we use a bit of Pythagoras, uh, we know that the hypotenuse from the very center of the grass roller to the pivot point is 0 0.6. So, uh, if we do 0 0.6 squared, which is the hypotenuse minus 0 0.5 squared, we get an answer, and then square root the whole thing, we get 0 0.33. So we know this distance here is 0 0.33. So the 500 newtons, its perpendicular distance to the pivot from its line of action is 0 0.33 meters. So 0 0.5 times the force from the handle is equal to 0 0.33 times 500 and therefore the force on the handle is 330 newtons. Okay guys, I hope that's been useful. Uh, uh, I hope I've not made any mistakes. Uh, if I have, just leave a comment and I'll edit this video. And uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye for now.